Hi there everyone, it's time to talk about land pollution and there are a lot of people in the world today and they need a lot of food and energy and getting that energy for them can cause several environmental problems which we need to think about. So land pollution, very simply, is when an area of land is damaged by some outside source. Land pollution can be man-made or it can be natural. And just have a think for yourself for a moment about what sorts of things can cause land pollution. So natural land pollution, for example, can be caused by volcanoes or earthquakes which can bring up different pollutants from inside the earth. Plants can also cause pollution in some ways. Poisonous sap can damage other nearby organisms. And forest fires, although that's not really the plant's fault so much, but that also creates quite a lot of pollution in an area. But the earth can handle natural pollution. The biggest problems by far are those caused by anthropogenic land pollution. So one example we're going to look at is intensive farming and intensive farming is putting a lot of money and resources to getting the most out of quite a small area of land and here you can see various different types of intensive farming, intensive crop farming, intensive animal farming and you can see that intensive farming changes the landscape quite significantly. So the technique of intensive farming is to make best use of modern technology like machines and different chemical fertilizers and pesticides. In intensive animal farming, which we also call factory farming, we keep large numbers of animals on very small areas of land. And these methods are designed to massively increase production, but they also lead to increased environmental damage. And again, I encourage you to have a little think about what kinds of damage you think might happen in these cases. So let's consider the good and the bad sides of intensive farming, shall we? On the good side, we get increased production per land area, per person and per unit of money invested. However, if we use lots of chemicals, fertilizers and pesticides, we can change the biological nature and the chemical nature of nearby water sources. We can preserve existing areas though. If we intensively farm small areas of land, then existing areas of woodland do not need to be cut down to expand our needs. On the other hand, by having intensively farmed areas, we limit or destroy the natural habitat of many wild creatures in that area. And over time, we get soil erosion, which leads to the intensively farmed land being useless anyway. However, food costs less to produce, and so we get cheaper food to buy, and everyone likes cheaper food, right? However, if you do not manage the land that you intensively farm, it can become infertile. So even if there is still soil, it does not grow anything. There's certainly a lower risk of starvation if there is food that is cheaper to buy, but pesticides can kill useful insects as well as those that destroy crops. Pesticides also have an unknown effect on human health, although as we saw recently, they have become extremely dangerous to bees. On livestock farms, we can capture the methane that the animals give out and we can keep that gas in order to use for energy. However, it isn't very much gas and it does make quite a small difference when we consider the amount of energy that we need to make and move and use the chemical fertilizers and pesticides that we are putting onto all of our intensively farmed goods. 
So there are advantages to intensive farming, but overall it does seem as though the disadvantages slightly outweigh them. So there is another downside of intensive farming and that is what is known as monoculture. To get more production we take all of the species away from a space except the one we want to grow. And with only one type of organism this is what is called monoculture. But this causes great damage to the ecosystems in an area and it reduces the amount of biodiversity that is found there. Biodiversity is incredibly important to sustain an ecosystem. It means that there is some endurance to the ecosystem. If one species dies, then other species can still survive. The food chain will not collapse. But the less species there are in the area, the less biodiversity there is, the less damage can be done to an ecosystem before it collapses completely and all the organisms in an area die out. So another problem that we sometimes find with land pollution is desertification. We all know about deserts, we've always had arid land on earth, but Humans are affecting the land now, especially in hot countries, and that is causing areas of desert to get bigger. So, the world's deserts formed over a very, very long time. In some places, there is a clear natural border to the desert, like along this mountain range here. But in other places there is not a clear edge to the desert and you might find a semi-arid land such as the one in the picture where it's kind of desert and kind of not. So arid is another word for dry and so desert fringes, the edge of a desert, is sometimes called semi-arid land, partly dry land. And these desert fringes are delicately balanced ecosystems. There is only enough biodiversity to just hold the ecosystem together because there is only just enough water and resources to just hold the ecosystem together. And so in these areas it is very easy for humans to damage the ecosystems and then the semi-arid land becomes fully arid land. It becomes desert. So how does desertification happen? Well, here is a simple diagram format. You have shallow dips in the landscape and these are useful for trapping water and allowing plants to grow in semi-arid areas. So humans then come along and cut down the trees for fuel and allow their livestock to eat the plants and trample the earth. And this makes it compressed and dusty and when the winds blow through they take away the top layers of earth. So that dip where the water used to get trapped, it disappears, it gets shallower until there's nothing left. In a very short time all of the good soil could be blown away and there is no way the plants can grow back. And it's a mistake to think that droughts cause this. It's not something that only happens in years where there is no rain. If you manage your lands well, then these places can recover when the rains return. However, it's about not overusing these areas and protecting them from our livestock. So some desertification is caused in the way we saw above, but it can also be the result of climate change or the overuse of water sources. This is Lake Chad over the space of the last 30 years or so of the 20th century and it shrunk by over 90% since the 1960s. As you can see in 1973 it's a big blue lake that goes across several countries in Africa and by 2001 it's just 
almost like an inland reef of small islands and swamps. And we can see that by 2007 there is slight recovery in the water levels, but it is still hugely below its original level before it was overused. So there, we've looked at a few of the key parts of land pollution. There are many other aspects of the subject and many other ways that we can pollute the land. So, unfortunately, we show no signs of changing our behavior and this is just one of the ways in which we are taking advantage of the world that we all live on.